to you. My name's Dale and this is Dale's Addiction. Thanks for joining me for this video where I share with you the five bags that I will never buy again. Now, this video started out as a collaboration between Vivian Connolly and Irene from Fabulous Irene. Hello, ladies. And I thought it was such a great concept for a video. I said to Irene, you know, you should create a tag out of this. And she said, good idea. I'm tagging you right now. So I am following up. Thanks for the tag, Irene. Super appreciate you doing that. Um, both Vivian and Irene have fantastic channels and I really enjoy watching their videos. I will link their videos below. But if you haven't heard of them by any chance, go and check them out. They've got extensive collections. They've got some great opinions on luxury handbags as well. And it's, you know, it's great to find um, down-to-earth luxury handbag collectors like these two ladies who can give you lots of information when you're considering purchasing a new baby. So it goes without saying that the title of this video, Bags I'd Never Buy Again, means that it is unlikely that I still have these bags in my collection. However, where I can show you examples, I will. Now, the first bag that I will never buy again is a bucket bag. Now, you might say, Dale, but you don't have any luxury bucket bags. And that is correct. I fell in love with Louis Vuitton's Bella bucket bag. And I looked at it and just by chance, there wasn't the color galet I think in store at the time and so I walked away and I ended up buying another Fendi peekaboo surprise surprise however a couple of weeks later I went to the coach concession store in our local department store and saw this the Laura bucket bag now this bag is the color that I wanted it's a beautiful soft leather. It was on sale. I think it was 30% off. It's got this great top handle. It's also got a great shoulder strap. It's got silver hardware, which I love, and it fits perfectly on the body. But I never reach for this. I never reach for it. I just, I don't think the silhouette is me. I, I, I can't put my finger on it, but I'm so glad that I spent what, 300 and something dollars on this bag as opposed to $5,000 for the Louis Vuitton bag before I decided that it wasn't for me. I mean, you might think, well, if you bought the Louis Vuitton bag, maybe you might have used it more. I do not think so. I, um, I actually saw it in the boutique again not that long ago and tried it and I'm glad that I passed on it. I think I love the novelty aspect, but yeah, unfortunately, as much as this is a beautiful bag, I've used it twice. I think I'm going to sell it. Um, yeah, bucket bags just aren't for me. I think the other thing with this larger bucket bag, and um, it's probably why I haven't jumped on the Fendi Montresor yet either, is because I find them a little tricky to get in and out of. With this larger style, it's not a size that I am particularly attracted to, so it's not big enough to fit a laptop, but it's way bigger than, you know, a um, one of my regular bags, and I think it would need an organizer to be useful. I'm, I love Louis Vuitton's Near and Away for carrying champagne, but even I am not luxe enough just to buy a bag to cart my champagne around in. Autumn Beckman, I am talking to you. Um, I think it's a beautiful bag, but I, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just a shape that doesn't work for me. So yeah, I will not be buying a bucket bag, a luxury bucket bag. Grey bags. Grey bags. Oh God, that Chanel boy bag in the beautiful shiny grey caviar was just divine. I fell in love with it. Um, I also had a contemporary bag by Age or Age, uh, an Australian um, designer brand. Like it is beautiful. They have beautiful clothing. I will link their website down below. You've probably heard of them. If you haven't, I think they're now stocked on Matches or My Teresa, one of those. Um, so they are getting out there. Just like Zimmerman, they have a really unique um, style, a little more edgy than Zimmerman, a little girly mixed with edginess which I quite like really interesting shapes anyway I bought a grey bag from them too 
and both of those grey bags are no longer in my collection. I just didn't reach for them. I made a video um, reviewing the Chanel Boy and it was a bit brutal uh, and it was nothing on the design of the boy. It was the fact that I just didn't reach for that bag when I had so many alternatives that kind of fit the bill. I look for, you know, muted colored bags and that gray was obviously a muted gray, but I would pick softer colors like pinks or a lilac over it. Uh, if I wanted the edginess of, um, both of those bags were quite edgy. Hopefully I can find a picture of that Arj bag, um, but if not, it will be in my very early contemporary collection video, which I will link above. I'm going to update that one shortly. Um, but yeah, they they just, I never reached for the grey bags and I don't know why because I thought that they were beautiful. I still think they're beautiful. I just, yeah, they just, I don't know. It's sad because grey is usually such, is considered such a great neutral, but yeah, I not for me. So the third style that um, I will never be buying again. I keep playing with my hair, I know. Um, uh Louis Vuitton totes that aren't the Neverfull. So I have had two Louis Vuitton tote style bags that are like, you'd say a medium sized bag. One was the Venus and it was a canvas and leather bag. If I can find a photo, I will pop it up here. I had it with the marine leather. It had some great hidden pockets. Um, it was a beautifully designed bag with lots of great storage and organization. Um, the inside of it was lined with this beautiful marine blue like microfiber lining. Unfortunately, that lining actually color transferred onto one of my wallets because it was so dark and stained all of the stitching in the wallet. Um, but I found with that bag, it was... I, I only used it for a couple of weeks and what I found difficult about it was that it, it wasn't big enough to hold a laptop but it was too big for me for just commuting and going to work it, it couldn't hold a lunchbox it couldn't hold a laptop uh, it could hold a notebook um, but yeah it was a large bag that really only carried the same essentials as a smaller bag then on the same vein, my husband very generously bought me back a gift from Sydney and he probably regrets the fact that he did that because I was like, oh, it's nice, um, but can we swap it? Uh, and it was the Twist Tote in Coquelico, I think that's how you say it, in the red um, style. And it was roughly the same size as the Venus. And I said to my husband, look, I'm really kind of trying to stay away from those style of bags. Would it be okay if we called the boutique to see if they had the twist shoulder bag? Because I really like the twist style. I wouldn't have chosen red, but he chose red. So to stay true to the gift, I took it back and exchanged it for this bag. Uh, and it's fair to say I don't use this bag much either. <laughs> Um, I think it's too big. Um, so, yeah, I will never be buying, and I think that's what's put me off buying a Fendi Peekaboo in the medium size. Um, if it doesn't hold a laptop and it's that big, I don't see any point in it in my collection because I just know I won't reach for it. Two controversial ones coming up. Uh, the first one is Chanel small flap bags in the classic flap style. I've had two of these. Uh, I bought the 19 spring summer pink iridescent small flap and also my reissue with the black um, aged calfskin and ruthenium hardware. <sighs> Neither of these bags worked out for a couple of reasons. One, with the double flap, they really only have the same capacity as a mini rectangular. And for me, the mini rectangular is much more versatile because you can wear it cross body and on the shoulder. Um, yes, you can't shorten it to shoulder carry, but if you buy some little clips and accessories, you definitely can. To me, I, I enjoy this bag much more um, for that reason, given that the storage capacity is about the same. Um, the other thing that this bag has 
is this longer strap that you can wear crossbody. Um, you cannot wear a Chanel small classic flap crossbody if you're over five foot tall. Um, yes, you can get the chain extended. Uh, actually, Amelia Rose has done a great video on how she sent off her medium flap to have the strap extended by the leather surgeons. I'll link that video down below. But um, for the price of the small classic flap, the storage capacity and the versatility, I would go with the Chanel Mini Rectangular any day. Oh, okay, and uh, if you have been a long time watcher of my channel, this last one will not surprise you, but I will never buy a Louis Vuitton Pochette Matisse again. Uh, where do I start? I think I bought into the hype of this bag to start with. I don't think that it sits with my style at all. Um, I think the the satchel kind of style um, was a bit too structured for me. Um, I didn't like how the bag looked crossbody. I didn't like how it looked on the shoulder. I liked the top handle. I liked carrying it top handle. Um, I think the price of that bag is now so overrated it's not funny to buy a brand new from the boutique and I'm just talking about the monogram style. I'm not even talking about the emprunt leather styles. I think that even its biggest fans, um, especially some people here on YouTube, have had real issues with the glazing on that bag and I didn't have any issues with mine. Um, but that's probably because I didn't use it very much. Uh, and so they've even had to return the bag and they were, you know, really um, huge fans of it. So it's not something that I will return to and I don't have any regrets about selling that bag on. And I have one bonus um, uh, category. It's not really a bag but I wanted to mention it and I will never be buying designer cosmetic bags. Um, this includes the Nice Mini BB. Um, this includes the Louis Vuitton toiletries bags. This includes the Christian Dior toiletries bags. I have had a couple of cosmetic bags and I want to shove them in my checked luggage. I want to not worry about them getting damaged by products spilling, um, getting stolen from a hotel room. And the price of these things, like I'm not going to convert a cosmetic bag into a handbag because I have handbags. Um, some people do a really great job of that. It's not for me. And I just, I'm, I'm not going to tell anyone how to spend their money. But certainly for me, each time I have, it's been a regret and I will never buy luxury cosmetic bags. So I know there's some of those options are a little controversial. Thanks for staying with me if you have so far. Tell me what do you think about the bags that I will never buy again. Please be kind. Uh, what are you never going to buy again? Let me know in the comments down below. If you have liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. I put out videos on Wednesdays and Sundays. So we'll see you next time. Bye.